Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Book Trip Live, a Merrill Moss Media production. Today we are joined by Cass Morgan, the author of the New York Times bestselling trilogy, The Hundred, which served as the launching pad for the CW series of the same name. It's an exciting day. I'm wearing war paint. We're not only talking with Cass, yes. woo but we are also, our live chat is sponsored by crazydogt-shirts.com and we're giving away Where Is Juan Hedda shirts, if you can see, um, to some lucky viewers in honor of the season three premiere of The Hundred Tonight. Uh, so stay tuned throughout the chat uh, for a secret word that you'll need to tweet at Booktrib to be entered to win. Um, so hi, Cass. You know, thanks for mu so much for joining us today to talk about the hundred. Um, to get started, let's. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's so exciting. Um, you know, to get things started, give the audience a rundown of of the book series and you know what we can expect. Yes. So if for some reason you have been living on a space station and haven't. I've uh, been following the fantastic action on the show, uh, or if you haven't read the books, the idea of the hundred, it takes place in the future after Earth has been rendered uninhabitable by nuclear war, as is wont to happen in young adult literature. Mm -hmm. The survivors have gone up into a space station, and a few generations have gone by. They think Earth might be safe again for humans, but they're not sure, and they can't risk real valued people to go down and see. So they send people they deem expendable, which is in this case, teenage delinquents from the space station's prison. Uh, so a hundred kids with dark secrets are sent down to earth. Um, if they survive, their crimes will be forgiven and they'll get to rejoin society. And if it turns out earth is not survivable and they all die, oh well. So uh, that's the premise. They lose contact with the ship and all the adults and romance and action and betrayal ensue and then uh so the books were the inspiration for the cw show of the same name it's been so much fun uh seeing what they've taken what they've changed and then it becomes you know something i can watch as a fan and that's why i'm so excited for the premiere of season three tonight Ooh -hoo. and now obviously you know there's some differences between the books and the show um you know alexandra wants to know of all the differences is there one specific plot line that you would have you know hoped made it into the show um the, so the books are told multiple uh, through multiple POVs, and there is one POV character, Glass, who in the book stays behind on the ship, which is a fun way to sort of see what happens after the hundred depart. And that didn't make it into the show for obvious reasons. They already had a lot going on on the ship with all the adult characters, and it makes total sense in terms of TV storytelling, but it would have been great to see her and her love interest, Luke, on screen. So that's something I missed a little bit. Ooh. And obviously, Balark, which for people who aren't aware of, you know, the ship Ooh. names <laughs> in, in the world, um, yeah. that's Bellamy and Clark. Um, and they're kind of, you know, canon in the books, which means that they happen. Um, but right now on the show, these two oh, yeah. <laughs> seem to be on different paths. Um, Kate wants to know, um, you know, how are you dealing with the fact that these two might not end up together? And she says, champagne for all of us. Ah, I love it. Um, okay, so just full disclosure, um, or not even full disclosure, caveat, I am speaking as the author and as a fan of the show. Mm -hmm. So I have no input in the show. I have no idea what the plan is. Um, as someone who enjoys watching Clark and Bellamy, especially as they're portrayed on the show with uh, by Bob and Eliza. Like there's clearly chemistry and they clearly have a really special relationship that I would love to see explored at some point. Um, but I just love what they're doing with the Clark and Lexa storyline. I think it's really bold storytelling. I think it's incredible characterization. And even though it's not necessarily something I envisioned when I was writing them in the book, it's exciting and sort of a privilege to see your characters reinterpreted by other people and sent on adventures you hadn't necessarily conceived of. So I know I'm probably causing a little bit of drama by saying I'm really enjoying it, um, but I am. And there's definitely a part of me that hopes we get to see some steamy Balark scenes in the future, but um, I won't be heartbroken if it doesn't happen this season. I think it's really smart to do a slow burn, uh, something that 
TV sort of has the opportunity to do because of the episodic nature. And I think it'll be all the more explosive and satisfying when and if it does happen. Yeah. And I mean, do you feel like, you know, I think it's good to be somebody who can appreciate these two characters together, but still want, you know, what you want in the end. I mean, I think that, you know, we kind of get torn between, you know, oh, no, Belark, oh, no, Klexa, but it's, you know, they both can happen. It's just, you know, you need different people at different points of time. So I think that's kind of, you know, what they're going for. I mean, I think so. I'm obviously I can't speak to, to that, but I think that that's what the beauty of it is, is to want both things. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that idea about needing different people at different points in time. Yeah, I think right now, Lexa is who Clark feels that connection and sort of feels like she understands what she's going through. And we know that crazy things are in store for season three. And so there's no knowing how those events are going to shape Clark and maybe push her into someone else's arm. <laughs> right. And now, you know, people are kind of talking about the books and just, you know, what you think about um, kind of what, you know, what's changed. And uh, Sarah wants to know, you know, how do you think the relationship between the show Wells and Bellamy would have developed had Wells, you know, not been killed? And she expressed that she loved, you know, the twist and, and all that good stuff, which, spoiler alert, don't look at the question if you haven't read the book. <laughs> um, but, you know, how did you feel, you know, how would you have felt? Oh, my God. Um, that is a fantastic question. Thank you for that. I have no idea what would have happened between Bellamy and Wells if Wells hadn't been killed off. Um, they have a major, major relationship uh, in the books. They are adversaries, and then something happens that makes them allies, and then it gets even more complicated. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to get spoil the book. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I would hope they would have incorporated that storyline because I think it's really, really cool and sort of gets to the heart of what makes the hundred so compelling um how someone how you see someone that you see as an enemy is also the one person you have to count on to survive so i think uh the book bellamy and well storyline would lend itself really well to exploring that motif and yeah i think the twist that's uh revealed in the second book day 21 why can't i figure out how this works <laughs> this one um i think if it were in the show it would blow people's minds so if, yeah, if you want to read something crazy, check out Day 21. Definitely, right. And now, um, you know, Connor says, you know, what was your response to the Klexicus? A handful of fans felt there was no buildup and it came out of nowhere. Do you feel the same? No. I mean, she definitely doesn't have, didn't have that same sort of history with Lexa as she did with Bellamy. But if you kiss people for a variety of reasons. Um, you kiss them because you like them for a really long time and trust them and care about them and are attracted to them and the timing feels right. And sometimes you kiss people because you can't help yourself. Right. And mm -hmm. I you know, think in a world like this where you don't know how long you're going to survive. Like that's why I always love disaster movies and post-apocalyptic stuff because it's really about heightened emotions and living in the moment and not really thinking about repercussions. So I think the Clark Lexa kiss really sort of speaks to that spontaneity and that that living for the moment definitely and I mean people want you know the show and 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 everything all over the world so that's kind of a testament to to your work um uh Becky says do you know when the show will crash be clap be wow well, words be crashed landing in the United Kingdom she doesn't think she can wait any longer Oh, well, thank you, Becky. I love the wording of your question. That's fantastic. <laughs> I don't know when it's airing in the UK. I think right now, like Google would be as accurate a source of information as me. So sorry, I can't be more helpful, but fingers crossed that it's soon. And I just have been so touched and flattered and excited by all the support all over the world, especially the UK. Um, I visited a few weeks ago and took photos of the book every time I saw it in Waterstones and foil. So thank you for your support and for spreading the word. That's so awesome. And now, you know, Jesse wants to know if you could guest star on the show, um, you know, what kind of character would you play? Thank you, Jesse, because no one's offered that to me yet. And I have such a great idea. Okay. So at first I was worried that my show was being my book was turned into a show for the CW because I just wouldn't be hot enough to be an extra because even the people in the background look like models. But since the grounders wear lots of makeup, 
And since they ride horses, which is one of my secret talents, I think I would make a fantastic grounder. Mm -hmm. um, I already have my outfit picked out. If you know the wardrobe department doesn't feel like they want to spend their time on that. So I would come, all I need is the horse. And I could even bring my own horse if people want. I don't have a horse, but I'm sure I could find one if the opportunity presented itself. So yes, I want to be a <laughs> spear toting, eye makeup wearing, horseback riding grounder. And Mackenzie, you can come and help me with my makeup. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> kind of, you know, to keep on the whole character, um, you know, going in that direction, you know, have any of the characters on the show done, you know, anything that you didn't expect them to do? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I didn't expect that little girl to kill Wells oh. in season one. Um, I did not expect, wait, we can talk about, Spoilers from seasons one or two. Yes, right? We're just yeah. assuming everyone's caught up. Mm -hmm. My God, I did never in a million years would have expected Clark to kill Finn. But I like, I really think that moment just captured her as a character. She has an incredibly sort of clear sense of right and wrong. Yeah. But it's all contextual based on that moment and the information available to her. So sometimes she thinks one thing, sometimes she thinks another thing. But she has this really, like, strong moral compass and, and is really ready to do whatever necessary, even if it's awful. So I thought that was a big turning point for her as a character. I didn't expect it, but I loved it. And now, did you expect kind of the end of season two, the whole, you know, Lexa betrayal and then Clark, you know, ultimately having to do what she did? No, I didn't expect any of it. And people assume that I'm sort of feigning my surprise when I'm live tweeting, but I don't watch the episodes ahead of time. I have no idea what's happening. Um, so I was shocked. And I think it. what I love about the show is that it keeps readers on their toes. Everything is surprising and shocking, but nothing really feels out of character. Mm -hmm. it, you sort of understand, yes, that is what someone with this set of values in this circumstance with these priorities might do in that situation, especially when they're at war. So I sort of love that balance between the shock value, but also how it feels really in keeping with the great characterization they've established. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people, obviously, they're, you know, people want, you know, Clark to be with Bellamy, they want Clark to be with Lexa. Um, but a lot of people are comparing the relationships in a sense, you know, that Bellamy kind of started out as this, you know, badass who was just breaking the rules and ultimately, you know, trying to destroy yes. people coming down. Um, and, you know, obviously, Lexa did this huge thing that, you know, really screwed, you know, Clark over. Um, do you kind of see those similarities of you know her being able to kind of move past you know you know what Bellamy was doing and move past what Alexa was doing uh, in terms of Clark moving past yeah yeah I think they've done a really great job establishing Clark as someone who while fiercely loyal and protective of her people sort of respects that in other people and understands that you do the best you can do in any given situation and sometimes in hindsight, it wouldn't necessarily be what you would have done, but when you're a leader and you have that responsibility and you're in that time crunch. So yeah, I think Clark could definitely get past that. Um, it was sort of fun playing with that dynamic in the books a little bit. So part of the premise of the books is that, and in the show, is that you know, these are all teen criminals who are imprisoned for something that the ship deemed unforgivable. And Clark's secret in the books is so, so dark and twisted, I actually didn't think I could get away with writing it. Not that like, people would get mad at me, but that I wouldn't be able to pull it off. Like, how can you make a character likable who has also done that? Um, mm -hmm. I think it worked. And I really think that that is an essential part of Clark's character. And I love, love how they've developed it and expanded it on the show. So yeah, if you want to see Clark do some really dark stuff, check out the book. Right. <laughs> Everybody go read it. Um, you know, Devin wants to know, you know, what character from the book or the show are you most like? Oh, hmm. I think I have a little bit of all the characters that I wrote in me. I think most authors do. Um, I definitely have Clark's sense of sort of you know, indignation and like moral justice, but I don't have her bravery. So there are things that I think are wrong and things that I witness, but I don't have her warrior spirit. I don't go after it with the same ferocity that she does. And that's something I really admire about her. Um, I think I have a little bit of Bellamy's 
rebelliousness. Um, I don't like being called a stew, but again, it doesn't have quite the same intensity. I think I wish I were more like Bellamy. I probably wrote him as that sort of rebel I wanted to be, but I'm much more of a secret rebel <laughs> living through my fictional characters. <laughs> and now, you know, Kate wants to know what has been your favorite storyline so far on screen? Oh, um, God. I mean, I thought it was so cool what they did, merging the worlds of the hundreds with Mount Weather and the relationships that were formed and then how that all came to a head. Um, mm -hmm. I love, love um, Kane and Abby. I just think it's so Abby. cool how they go from adversaries to allies. I also have, okay, he'll never hear this, but um, I have such a big crush on Henry Ian Cusick and always have like, since Lost. So when I found out that he'd been cast as the vice chancellor, I like lost my mind. I couldn't stop giggling for hours as if, I don't know, like as if now he and I had some connection and he was like definitely going to mm -hmm. meet me and fall in love with me. So yes, that storyline has been really fun for me. Right. Be like, you just put it out there. Maybe that will happen. Um, you yeah, know, there's sure obviously season three. Yes. That he falls in love with some YA author, you know, from back in time, from the olden days right. of Earth. You never know. Maybe you'll get that guest oh. spot after all. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> You know, Susan says, um, you know, looks like there's a new gal in Clark's life when the show mm. returns. What if she never ends up with Bellamy or Alexa? What if someone else steals her heart? What are we going to do? You know, I trust the incredibly talented writers to send Clark on a journey that they think is going to be emotionally satisfying. So um, I defer. I'm not going to weigh in. I, I think whatever okay. they decide to do is going to be awesome. And now what did you, um, like, what was your reaction when you watched the trailer? Were you just like the whole time or was anything that really stood out to you when you watched it? Um, I think I was just screaming, but silently since I was at work. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, then I couldn't hold it in anymore. So I like definitely let out some sort of screech and someone goes, you know, what's going on? Is someone hurt? And then someone else shouted, um, it's the season three trailer for the hundred. So yes, somebody's probably hurt right now. So that was really fun how my coworkers all got into the spirit of it with me. That's awesome. Yeah, no one is safe. War is coming. We're prepared. Or are we? I don't know. You got to tune in tonight. Um, yes. You know, <laughs> um, I guess, no, that's a similar question. We don't want that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Sarah says, you know, if you could write a fourth book, what direction do you see your characters going in? Ooh. Um, so let's see. How do I answer this without spoiling the book? So at the end of book three, Homecoming, which is such a cool cover, if you guys haven't seen it. Like, the smoke is so awesome. Yeah, it's also behind Mackenzie. So <laughs> at the end of the third book, something really big happens that would definitely be something I wanted to explore um, if there's a book four but in terms of stuff I can say without sounding annoyingly vague and cryptic um, Bellamy finds himself in a leadership position that he hasn't been in before which is something I would really want to explore because in the show he assumes that authority pretty early in the books he's a little bit more of an outsider for longer so I would love to explore that tension between his sort of natural rebelliousness but also his incredible loyalty for the people he has started to feel responsible for so yes that's probably that's what would be the heart of book four if I if if I get the opportunity to write that Ooh, well we want to see a fourth book so we're just putting out those <laughs> vibes um, a lot of people I'm seeing comments of, you know, people are sad that Wells was kind of killed off on the show pretty yeah. early on. And, you know, Sarah <laughs> Sarah says, I will be forever disappointed that they decided to kill Wells. Um, you know, a bunch of fans think he would have been perfect for Raven. You know, what are your thoughts on, you know, what their dynamic could have been? That is interesting. Oh, my God. Um that is such a good question. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I have never thought about that, but I think I agree. So in the first book, there's a little bit of a tension between Wells, Bellamy, and Clark. And um, it turns out that Wells may have committed some terrible crime in order to get sent down to Earth to be with Clark, who is his ex-girlfriend, who he still loves. But of course, mm. she may find someone else that she finds intriguing on Earth. Um, <laughs> 
So I think in the show, since Wells and Clark don't necessarily have that history, it would have made so much sense for him to get involved with Raven. We know he likes tough girls. Um, we know he likes smart girls. And I think, yeah, I actually think he would have fallen pretty hard for Raven. So if anyone wants mm. to write that fan fiction, I give you my full permission. <laughs> <laughs> and now what do you think about, you know, the characters, the new characters that they've kind of created in this world? Um, is there one character that really just stands out to you that you just have grown to love a lot? Um, I love Murphy. I think he awesome. sort of deliciously evil, but sort of vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I, I'm really interested to find out what happens with his storyline now that he's off with Jaha. Um, I I love what they've done with Abby and, you know, Paige does such a spectacular job bringing her to life. In the books, Clark's parents are not alive, so I never got the chance to write her mother. So that's been really fun to see. Ooh. Um, and now, obviously, we've kind of uh, hit a point where we want to tell you guys the secret word so you can head on over, um, you know, to Twitter and tweet at Booktrib one Hedda, and you can be entered to win um, one of these t-shirts from crazydogtshirts.com. Where is one Hedda? Oh no, I guess you're gonna have to tune in and see. Um, so obviously we have, right, we have lots more questions. Um, let's see, you know, all right, uh, nope, uh, sorry, there's so many, there's so many, I don't even know what to say. Right, Vito, mm -mm. one of those, my face is probably just hilarious, um, you know, watching me look for the questions, but um, all right. Ooh, uh, Devin wants to know, what are your thoughts on Lex and Clark? You've kind of touched upon that a little bit, but um, she says, do you think you would have ever added a character like Lexa to the books? Hmm. Um, I sort of, I think I sort of do. So um, in the books, the equivalent of the grounders are called the Earthborn. So they're sort of this mm. tribe of people who never went up into space and have an adversarial relationship with the with the hundred. Um, and there's a character who is definitely a sort of badass teen girl leader figure. Um, in the books, she's called Sasha. So. Um, mm. Alexa wasn't more than a, a sparkle in the writer's eyes when I wrote Sasha, so I don't, you know, they're definitely two separate entities, but I think their sort of spirit is similar. So, yeah, and then in terms of what people really love about Alexa, in addition to her being a strong, fierce leader, it's her connection to Clark, um, that, yeah, totally could have been a storyline that I would have had a lot of fun writing, but I'm so proud and glad to see it played out on screen on the show right i know they've done a great job kind of just molding their worlds and and adding some new characters as well and you know kate says you know in your books bellamy and clark are, are undoubtedly fond of each other that's probably an fond understatement but <laughs> yeah. fond uh, they're fond of each other um <laughs> she says why do you think you know book Balark worked so well Ooh, oh my god. Um, well, I, I mean, I didn't know it worked so well. I didn't realize what the reaction was going to be. So it's incredibly gratifying to hear readers' responses and see how much that relationship has resonated for people. Um, I, I think in the books what works really well is that Bellamy is the only person Clark can really be a teenager around. Like, most of the time she feels the weight of responsibility on her shoulders the future of the human race is in her hands and she has to be serious and she's the only doctor on earth and has a lot to do but bellamy brings something out in her you know he really teases her he flirts with her and at first she finds that annoying but then it allows her to let her guard down and i think he gets to see a side of her most people don't and in doing so she she gets to see a side of herself she hasn't seen in a while so i think yeah i hope what resonates for people is that there's that playfulness and they have great banter and I also just spent a lot of time writing the kissing scenes and I hope my work paid off because sometimes it felt really awkward and sometimes I felt myself <laughs> falling in love with Bellamy which felt really inappropriate so yes if book bullark works for people I just want to say thank you and I'm glad.
That's great. And now at the end of season two, were you like screaming with the Blark, you know, hug and her kind of just walking away? Were you just like sobbing in the corner? I feel like the whole, the majority of everybody was like, oh, no, where's the kid? Yeah. Well, I was live tweeting and sometimes I get behind. So I was like looking down at my computer and then the whole room starts screaming. I said, what happened? And they shut like, kiss. So I didn't know it was like a cheek kiss or a mouth kiss. So then we had to rewind and I watched it and then we watched it again. Um, yeah. So yeah. And then you Emotions were running hot. <laughs> oh my God. Right. The gifs. Thank yeah. you. Thank you to everyone who created those gifs. And I think it was trending <laughs> on Twitter that night. It was just amazing. I'm sure it was. And now, you know, Becky wants to know, which actor do you think suits their character the most? I mean, the whole cast is amazing, obviously, but if you had to pick somebody who kind of transformed that, you know, character on the book to the screen, as I whack myself Great in the question. face. Um, <laughs> I didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> it, didn't it didn't happen. happen. What are you talking about? It didn't happen. Um, I think <laughs> Eliza as Clark is fantastic. Think she gets that mix of fierceness and vulnerability, which for me was always a hallmark of Clark, um, and it worked really well. Um, in terms of visually, it, when I saw the picture of Marie, who plays Octavia, it was startling, because it's so, so what I had pictured in my mind. It almost felt a little creepy, like, who hacks into my brain <laughs> and cast this girl? And then, of course, her performance is just extraordinary. So. Yeah, watching her is is just surreal and so much fun. And now, obviously, with the show returning tonight, you know, what are you looking forward to the most? Is there, is like something you're kind of waiting for or you're just kind of really excited for it to be back and to see where these characters are going this season? I want to. I want to know about that really creepy, beautiful AI lady who was talking to Jaha. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that storyline is going to be fantastic. So I'm really excited about that. You know, I want to know where Clark went. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I just, I have no idea what's happening. And so I'm um, as clueless and hopeful as everyone else. Right. And now you said you're going to be live tweeting with us tonight and watching the show? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What are you most excited about? What storyline are you are you curious about? Oh boy, about? I don't know. I I really am curious to see you know what what develops with Jaha. We're not really sure if he's crazy or if he is onto something. I'm very I'm very intrigued by that storyline. I'm like yeah. confused but intrigued. I think. Um, and also, obviously, I want to know what Clark's doing. Um, is she coming mm -hmm. back? Where Where is she going? I mean, there's so yeah. many questions. There's so many kind of characters that I'm really excited to see. Um, and I just, I really can't wait uh, for it to come back. But, um, and soon, it's happening so soon. So I'm really yes. excited. <laughs> like, yes. Three and um, and now, right, I know, countdown, it's how many minutes? How many seconds? Four and a half. Three and a half, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And now, um, you, you know, obviously you'll be live tweeting. Do you ever get, um, in terms of Twitter interactions with fans, do you ever get people who kind of, you know, blur the line of, you know, you you wrote the books and obviously there's this TV show. Do they think that you are the one who's kind of pulling the strings? Do you ever get any negative feedback or how is it kind of living yes. in that bubble? Yes, thank <laughs> you. And I appreciate the chance to set the record straight. Um, yes. I'm not involved in the show. So no matter what I think about Bullark or Klexa, I just, it, I can't control what happens. I mm -hmm. am just as invested as everyone else, but I don't get any opinion or sway. So yes. Uh, so there's no reason to get mad at me if the ship you want doesn't take off. <laughs> and, but other than that, no, like people have been so, so nice and supportive and it's just been the best part talking to fans. It's just such a treat. Right. That must be so amazing. And, you know, Becky says, thanks for answering my question. And she says, you know, have you ever written something and decided to take it out? If so, can you give us an example? What didn't make oh the God. cut? Yeah, I have like <laughs> a whole book length of uh, scenes that didn't make it in. Um, like Some of it's really big stuff that just didn't work with the rest of the book. And some of it's really small stuff. Um, I had a scene where Clark actually goes to Mount Weather and finds Van Gogh's Starry Night, um, which 
I really love, but didn't make it into the final book. And then it showed up in the show, which was like really <laughs> validating for me. I'm like, oh, you know, it did work and it is a beautiful moment. So I was just, I was really, really glad to see that on screen. That's so amazing. Oh my gosh. That must've been like, what? what's going on? Yeah. And now in terms of kind of the differences, you know, is there, you know, what's one thing that you, I don't know what I'm trying to get at here, but what's, you know, one thing that you're kind of, you know, really excited that did, you know, that you didn't wrote, wrote, wow, words. It's, it's a long day today. Oh my gosh. I'm having uh, one of those meltdowns, but um, you know, what was something that you kind of were like, Hey, this really worked. I wish I wrote that. There you go. Let's get the words out today. We can do it. <laughs> really, really good question. Um, hmm. I, I think incorporating sort of elements of the different sort of cultures that were left behind works really well in the show mm -hmm. and sort of my version of earth it takes place so I think in the show it's 99 years since humans left earth in my show uh, my book it's 300 and the oh, idea wow. was that like most infrastructure most buildings like most evidence that humans ever existed were destroyed so it's almost more like a lost lord of the flies like people coming down to this planet that's all forest and jungle and nature with like a few remnants um and I like how on the show there's just a lot more to play with I, I think it's cool that they have Mount Weather full of people and like all these different societies and yes yeah, so I think it sort of makes sense that we each chose a different premise for our stories but I think that works really well on the show right and now the double-headed deer we can't forget that 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 was that no. was a that was a big moment um, when they got down on the ground, obviously. So that's uh, that's pretty cool to kind of see that come to life. Are you just kind of in awe still? Like, do you still kind of get not starstruck, but are you just really excited that your work kind of got out there? Yeah, I mean, it it is so 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 rare for a book to get turned into a TV show or a movie, mm -hmm. and I'm just extraordinarily lucky and grateful. So every day I'm grateful for that and uh most of the time though I don't really think about it that much you know I have a, a full-time job where people aren't talking about the hundred all the time and um some people don't even know about it the most do. so but the sort of those moments where I get to sort of break out of that compartmentalization like um so I went to visit the set last year which as you know films outside of Vancouver and I was playing it mm -hmm. cool okay not really cool I was like, so nervous I couldn't walk <laughs> But I wasn't letting it show, and then I'm driving up this mountain into the sort of national park where they film, and all of a sudden, I'm just walking down this dirt path, and I see a spaceship in the trees, and it was just <laughs> sort of, that was the moment it was real for me. It's like, oh my god, this spaceship fell out of my head into this forest in Canada, and yeah, so that for me sort of made the world feel really real and sort of made the show feel really real. So that was probably the coolest moment so far for me. That's so amazing. And now obviously we're kind of running in over time, but we are having a blast. Um, and kind of the last question would be, you know, what would be the message to the fans? I mean, book fans, show fans, obviously, you know, there's some, some shipping wars going on and just everybody speculating what's going to happen. Do you have anything, not to ease people's mind, but just to kind of, Say, hey guys, keep the peace. Just that I think the show is doing something revolutionary in terms mm -hmm. of storytelling, in terms of presenting you know, queer relationships, in terms of showing that you can kill off main characters, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of keeping people on their seat. And, and that's what makes the show so great. And just because it's not going in the direction you necessarily thought it would doesn't sort of devalue it and I think they're just doing masterful storytelling so yes my advice would just be go along with the ride and ride. If you want lots of full arc I mean there are scenes in the books that I like can't imagine my parents reading without wanting to die so there's plenty of full arc action there <laughs> right that's some great <laughs> advice 
And obviously, it's been a joy to have you. Um, we want to thank, obviously, Crazy Dog T-shirts for donating some awesome T-shirts that you can enter to win. Um, everyone's a winner, though. So if you don't win, you can head on over to the link that I'm posting right above, and you can use that promo code and get 20% off to, to, to get the shirt and join us. Where is Juan Hedda? I mean, that is the question on everybody's mind. Um, and yeah, this has been awesome. I will be live tweeting as well, and Cass will be live tweeting at Cass Morgan Books. So be sure to tell her what you think and, and read the books, because they're awesome. <laughs> hey, thank you guys, this was so much fun. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Cass, so much. Enjoy the premiere, and you we'll see too. you on the other side. <laughs> awesome. All right, bye guys.